Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome. It's great to see you all here at Celebrating Act 2 with my partner, John Coleman. And John, what are we going to talk about today? What kind of exciting things are we going to share with our Celebrating Act 2 audience? Well, I think the first thing we should talk about is how do you know that they're out there and it's great to see them? Because I can see them. I actually oh. can see them. Unlike you, who've been in this business since you were, what, just eight years old and yeah. on screen as a child actor? Yeah, we won't go into that much. Okay. Okay. You, you more than anybody else should know that there are people watching, whether it's dozens or thousands or tens of thousands. I can see that there are people there who are hanging on, if not my every word, because I don't have as good a diction as you do, but certainly on your every word. I can see them and... So everybody say hello to John. Hi. Oh, oh, hi, everybody. Oh, <laughs> we can see you. Just remember that. We know you're there. Didn't, didn't one of the late night people say that about people who were in their bed? Uh, I'm just saying. Yeah. yeah. There was Johnny Nothing Carson and somebody who says, I can see you there. Be yeah. careful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, we do have a busy, uh, a, 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 it's at the end of December. And we're busier than ever uh, getting ready for the new year. Right. And even we're even getting out and about, aren't we? Yeah. 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 Uh, Hollywood. We went to uh, Hollywood. The uh, Hollywood Museum. How, Hollywood, how the, the Hollywood Heritage Museum with Manny Pacheco and a, about a dozen really amazing authors about Hollywood related oh. uh, things. And they were all fascinating. Oh, they were great. They were right. great. Um, some were name authors, some were not. Uh, but all the subjects were about uh, movies, movie history, uh, movie personalities, right. just wonderful books. And, of course, it was uh, a book signing ceremony or uh, event, I guess you'd call it, uh, at Hollywood Heritage at the, uh, the barn. They call it the barn. It's the first hmm. studio... In uh, built in Hollywood, it's an old barn that was used as a movie studio, right. first movie studio, and uh, it it's a great story in itself because it was rescued by Hollywood Heritage. As a matter of fact, one of, one of the hot. one of the stories that uh, we got almost quite unexpectedly was uh, we got there early and there was this old Model T Ford uh, convention that was that was just sort of convening there, getting together. Yeah. And they going off on their own to some kind of uh, soiree. A, a I think I think you know what they get together and they just uh, they cruise Hollywood, just mm. get in the old cars and drive up and down. That's what, what I mean? think. You mean like? But, uh, but I want to correct. But they you. don't. The cars don't do that, right? No, it's a different <laughs> kind of car club. But anyway, anyway, the the, the uh, uh, some fellow named Brian who who actually runs the museum, sort of like gave us an impromptu background of the whole museum so we've got that and we'll get yeah. that out to everybody really yeah, fascinating we, we got a lot of video and of right. course we'll be processing it over the holidays and um, maybe uh, into the first of the year and and it'll be available for you to watch mm -hmm. oh maybe uh starting in late january and we'll yeah. spread out i think we've got didn't we get 11 author interviews with manny pacheco Right. And also, by the way, you know, the only person we didn't uh, interview, who we've interviewed a hundred times before, is Manny. <laughs> yeah, I know. He was too busy talking to everybody else. He was uh, too busy. He, did, he yeah. did sell some books at the... Uh, yeah, a lot of books. Book signing, yeah. Um, I have to correct you, though, because it wasn't a Model T club. It was the Horseless... I'm trying to remember the correct name. The Horseless Carriage Club. Of Los Angeles, uh -oh. and the reason I correct the Model T is because you didn't, you must not have seen it, but there was a beautiful, beautiful, restored Pierce Arrow. No, I did not. I did not. I thought they were all Model Ts. Most of them were Fords. Oh, weren't. And there was a couple of there was a couple of racing cars. Oh yeah, they, they weren't. They literally weren't all mo Model Ts in my vernacular. Anything that was that old, older oh, than us even, thing. older than us even. <laughs> Uh, as a Model T, but it, it, in fact, there were some really, really high-end touring cars. Yeah, uh, they, they a great collect collection. Um, well, one thing I didn't notice, though, uh, I guess it's uh, to make sure that uh, they don't slow down their 
uh, uh, their opportunities to start up and get around. Very few of them really actually had cranks, and all of them yeah. had electric starters buried someplace underneath the hood. Uh, right. So they weren't they weren't exactly uh, 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 crank operated, but they, they were all all stunning. And a lot of the uh, people who uh, uh, own these cars and I guess to display them were wearing period costumes. So it's really kind of yes. fun. And in fact, um, uh, we, we haven't shared it yet, but uh, I sent a copy of the parade of all the cars leaving the lot <coughs> with the uh, uh, organizer of that event. I haven't heard back from him yet, but uh, uh, we were able, we did most of them um, uh, without sound, MOS, uh, to those in the crowd who know. Mm -hmm. But uh, really? that last okay. one... The last one we got the uh, shotgun mic up and everything was running, so you hear these guys putt putt putting along, which was kind of fun. <laughs> and there must have been about thirty or forty of them there, and that was yeah. just we weren't even expecting them. We just happened to show up early. That yeah, that was that was before the book signing event. Right. We just showed up early and got another uh, another video out of it. It was right. a lot of fun. But the uh, I remember that was my uh, I don't think it was my first time in the Hollywood Museum, Hollywood Heritage Museum, um, but I don't think I had been through the whole place before. And mm -hmm. uh, this time we got to go in and out um, through the whole uh, building. And wow, what wonderful collections they have. What wonderful displays they have. Of course, at this event, most of the room was taken up with tables for the yeah. authors to sign books and stuff. But oh, uh, by, by, by the way, I just want to say that uh, uh, people can watch them as we release them. One of the uh, really sweet things uh, of the day, and we spent about 10 hours there or so, was that uh, Leonard Malton, who's had some health issues of recent uh, right. vintage, was there getting around and, and looking as he, he was he was really enjoying life, and had his first grandchild. He, he, he partners up with his daughter, Jessie, uh, who uh, was with him for most of the day, and then at the very end, uh, his uh, uh, grandchild, uh, uh, Came in, I guess, with the, the, his oh. wife. His wife was babysitting, and they brought yeah. her in. So then Jesse was feeding the baby. Yeah. But you could just see how all aglow he was, and he's in his sixties someplace now. So, uh, but it's his first grandchild, and just a, a very happy, sweet moment. Uh, and of course, we had a brilliant interview with him because he's a, a brilliant Hollywood dude. I mean, he just yeah. knows stuff. Well, he's got his book is kind of an autobiography, and it's mm -hmm. a great story. I mean, if you knew where he came from and all of that. Great story. But yeah. all those authors were had wonderful stories. Um, William Wellman Jr. Oh, Wild Bill's son. Wrote the book about his father, and you could see it was very touching. You know. Mm -hmm. um, also, that there was a number of books that were great, filled with great photos, um, historic photos. I, yeah. I just thought every book was a gem. And of course, the, the um, Hollywood Heritage Museum I, I keep wanting to say the barn mm. um, is has a bookstore has a uh, I guess it's a bookstore but it's a store yeah, yeah. and curios and things like that buy all kinds of books and they're online too hollywoodheritage.com right. anyway and, we had a great time and I do want, I do want, I do want to share with everybody a disappointment that John had is that we had a, we, we were setting up to recharge batteries and things like that and it's still some of our equipment uh, but they didn't let you uh, actually uh, sit behind the desk of the Cecil B. DeMille office. And I know that I saw a tear in your eye, but you, you, you manned up and you, yeah. you, you just, you bucked up and you, you, you took it like a man. I, I, I pretended that I was there and I yelled, roll them. <laughs> anyway, um, I, I, we had a great time and we got a lot. We'll have a dozen videos, I think, out of that whole thing. Right. And uh, you have to look at Celebrating Act 2 over the, first half of the year of 22 and you'll see them we'll spread them out so you can see one a week or one a month or who knows what but um they're all interesting well let's talk about um, some, uh, some other exciting stuff that we have going on like uh tomorrow we're speaking with dave Samuels, who we haven't released yet we've just done a wonderful uh, uh interview with him a week or two ago who yeah. is a certified financial planner uh yes. and uh, say, his, say uh, his name again art uh, dave Sam samuels Okay. Uh, what what was it? Okay. <laughs> and uh, you, you and here, good friends. Yeah. Samuels. 
Yeah, Dave Samuels. I'm, hey, oh, okay. you're making fun of the way I talk. I heard you mumbling. Between, between my lips and your ears, there's a huge <laughs> gap, and it's not just the 50 miles that uh, our houses uh, are distant. My what? My what? <laughs> So in any event, uh, uh, what, what, he's going to talk about a whole bunch of individual items yes. tomorrow, which will release yeah. over a period of time. Do you remember what some of them are? Um, I remember that, of course, that's why we're going to interview him, because he right. knows them what we don't. But I remember that there were five pillars right. uh, to financial planning, and every one of them sounded important. One was uh, tax planning. Yeah. Uh, another was estate planning. In other words, income, uh, boy, is that important when right. you get older, right? After you, quote, retire and you get on Social Security, you wonder where the next dollar is coming from. That's going to be an important one. But uh, five pillars of financial. Uh, how did John, John, because I have your production schedule here, okay? Oh, thank you. There's, there, I just saw this risk management and investments on the other two. Yeah. Risk management. So in any event, uh, he... he uh, uh, he was so interesting. You know, you figure finance, okay, it's a one-off, and thank you very much. He was really enthusiastic. He loves what he does. He yep. loves helping people. He's, He's a been fiduciary. doing it for quite a while. He's a fiduciary, so they don't sell products, okay? They base their fees on how well they do for their clients. And so uh, they are a different strata uh, than just going to uh, Fidelity or to Schwab, where you get... Uh, if, if you have enough money, they'll sit down with you and they'll come up with a plan and then they try to, you know, steer you into some good investments in, in their world and index loans and things like that. But yeah, the whole, these the whole people idea. don't have an axe, to grind, an axe to grind because they don't sell anything. What they do get paid for is performance and right. to watch but out so for your assets. Whole I, the whole idea, and I think this is important for everybody over 50. Actually, it's important for everybody who's an adult and working. And hoping um, to become over 50 someday. Yes, who wants, <laughs> wants to be 50? Right. Um, the whole idea is to plan uh, for the future. So, you know, it's just as important to plan at 25, uh, plan for the, uh, buying a house, plan for putting the kids through school, plan for retirement. Mm -hmm. um, it's just as important every year to plan for the future. It probably becomes more critical the older you get, I would think after 50. Um, so many people in the United States don't have any real savings and they don't begin to start saving and planning their financial life until after, you know, Social Security hits them smack in the head. Bam! Oh, uh, and that, John, I, I want to let you, I, I, I haven't I, shared this with you, John, here. yet, but I was so excited with uh, uh, Dave's first interview with us that I have already volunteered to be 25 again so that I can do some proper planning. <laughs> so, you know, uh, if, if, well, I look a lot, if I look a lot younger uh, over the next couple of months, uh, please don't throw me out of the club because I'll be 25, <laughs> but I'll be thinking in my 70s. It's, it's due to Dave. We'll thank yeah. him for that. Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but anyway, I think his interviews, when, we're, when we get them uh, shot and edited, um, there'll probably be about six videos. I think those will be very important. Um, of course, he can't give specific advice because we're recording, you know, for millions of people. But his his knowledge of financial planning, uh, yeah. I think, is really going to be critical for a lot of people. Uh, people who haven't thought about, you know, planning their financial future. Okay. So, Another uh, exciting thing we have coming up is uh, in, uh, I think it's next month, we're going to be interviewing J.A. Jance on her new J.P. Beaumont book yes. that's coming out in, I think, February. So Yeah. Uh, now, you, I'm a big Beaumont fan. I, I, I love her books. She's got these three main characters that she writes books about. She's Ali like, Reynolds, Joanna Brady, and uh, some guy named Walker. Uh, and the Walker family. The Walker family. Welcome. So that's four. And uh, did you say Allie Reynolds? Yes. Allie Reynolds, yeah. Joanna Brady, and uh, the Walker family. Yeah. So the the uh, Beaumont series, J.P. Beaumont, he's a detective from Seattle. That's her um, first. Her first that's uh, her, book. Her, and a wonderful series. I know mm. you're a bigger fan of, what, Joanna Brady series? Uh, yeah, except that I, uh, over, over the... Uh, the last six or seven days, not only did I read the new book, 
but I read, uh, I reread the first book in the series, read the second book. I'm on the third book, Trial by Fury, I think it is, uh, for yeah. Boma. They're all fascinating characters. Uh, yeah. I'm liking him more and more all the time. And to me, as a character, he, uh, she, uh, I, I spoke to her about it uh, about a week or so ago in the communications, and she doesn't know that he's changed that much. She's still one of her favorites. Uh, but I see where he's changed, and I think she, we exchanged a little information about that. Uh, but he's really, uh, uh, as the books get further and further and further along, and uh, uh, I'm not letting any cat out of the bag, he eventually remarries and has a wonderful relationship with uh, the wife in his, his new book, and early books, which I know you've read. Uh, so I find him a, a very engaging character as well. And I'm, I, yeah. uh, uh, in the last three or four months, I think I've read about 11 of her books, plus an amazing book of poetry she wrote. Uh, when she was trapped in her uh, first yeah. marriage, and uh, wonderful, uh, wonderful book, fire yeah. uh, be after the fire, is that what it's called? I think so. Yeah, well, her book. Have, hold on, I have it right here. Okay. <laughs> it is at your fingertip. It, well, hold it, it up. Uh, book, uh, after, uh, the fire. after the fire, J. A. Chance, and uh, this is the first of her books that I bought because during the interview that we did with her, I was so taken with her and her story, because I read something about it. And thank you and Penny for having introduced me to her and had the good fortune to contact her. She's a brilliant writer, but she's got this amazing story of resilience, of living through a, 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 an awful marriage where where she, she was suppressed. Yeah. She was oppressed, and she didn't start writing her first book until she was like 37, 38. And she's yep. now our age in her 70s, and she's got over 70 books, most of them on the New York Times bestseller list. Yeah. Really an amazing story. Yeah. Uh, and you can see her story in our interview with her yes. uh, that we did a, a few months back, mm -hmm. uh, which is up on Celebrating Act 2. But right. the next interview we do with her sometime, uh, I guess you'll see it sometime in February is my guess. Right. Um, that interview is about her new, new coming book with uh, J.P. Beaumont, the right. detective. Nothing and to lose. I think it's I love, no, nothing to lose. Oh, yeah, thank you. Um, you. Now you read the book. You read yes. the advanced copy. And what I loved was the not only the Beaumont character. He's a good character. Um, but I loved. He goes to Alaska for this right. particular mystery to solve a problem, and he ends up with a woman who is a truck driver. Twinkle. <laughs> Twinkle. Excuse Twinkle me. Twinkle Winkleman. Well, but but to, to her friends, we call her Twink. We call her Twink, right? Right. Anyway, great character, great story, uh, wonderful, even though it's all but, part of- But she has career. to compete with the, with the bone doctor, uh, yes. Har Harriet. Harry, Har Harry, to to, to, her, to her, her friends, she's Harry, who is who is a uh, uh, fifty percent, uh, uh, I guess, Caucasian or something, and fifty percent uh, uh, Native Alaskan, uh, yeah. and uh, has all sorts of connections yeah. with with uh, 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 not witch doctors but medicine men and yeah. things like that. Just an absolute slew of fascinating characters. It's a, it's a great book. Yeah, it's a great book. Anyway, yeah. I'm dying to talk to her yeah. about that book and these characters that she's peppered throughout the story. It's a, a great plot. By the way, as a, as a side note to you, I don't know what I told you, but uh, uh, one of my grandsons, Madden, who's nine, was in her room, and I have about ten of her books on the shelves strewn around. Yeah. Some you've loaned me, some that I bought uh, uh, in my room. And uh, uh, Madden is a pretty avid reader, so he asked if he could borrow some of the books. <laughs> and I was a real reluctant because of the, uh, some of the subject matter that's in the book, maybe a little bit too early for him. So I told yeah. her, I'd ask her what she would recommend. And she was very sweet. She sent back a note within a day or so indicating that she didn't let her kids start reading them until they were older. Now, mm -hmm. her kids are my kids' ages now. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, but she said she'll contact her grandson, Colt, C-O-L-T, great name, isn't it? 
and uh, ask him, because he's an avid reader, what his list would be. And last night I received the list that Colt reads, which includes you know, Harry Potter and, oh, and that's great. a whole bunch of other things. Many of the books, by the way, that Madden has already read, because he's yeah. several years older than Colt, but a whole number of others which are really fascinating, which I won't list here. But uh, she's really um, a very thoughtful person. She doesn't know us that well, but apparently the reason why we got to interview her, and this I think is as interesting a story as any, is that you and Penny were so taken with the books that you've read of her that you just contacted her website and she yeah. answered you. Yeah, I know. Talk and, about accessible. Right. <laughs> And she apparently uh, uh, keeps up dialogue with a lot of her fans, and uh, she's just a, a really uh, an inspiring individual. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah, we really got forward to that interview. So you That'd know, sometimes fun. sometimes when I do postings on Facebook of uh, uh, like when we went to the American uh, uh, to the Hollywood Heritage Museum and things like that, and at the end, and I've been doing this a year because remember, to me, my second act is entertainment is uh, I, I oftentimes end with the statement, did I ever tell you I love what I do? Because <laughs> it's just, we, we do so many really interesting things with some yep. very well-known and even not so well-known uh, uh, writers and, and, and celebrities and things like that, that it's just, it's a lot of fun. And most of them, as you say, like uh, J.A. Jans is, uh, is very accessible. Um, I don't think we've actually run into anybody who is really nasty I'm sure yeah. that there are them. No, we get turned down by very nice people. <laughs> Some of the nicest. <laughs> uh, but anyway, the people in the world won't talk to us. So anything else? Did we we got a lot of we've got about five or six other things. As a matter of fact, as soon as this interview is, uh, episode is over, uh, you and I are hopefully going to be in interviewing a, a woman who's uh, I guess my guess would be in her early fifties, who's in production and is is churning out. All sorts of new things. You've got new things going on in her life, and I'm hoping yep. that uh, after we speak to her this morning, we can set up an interview. So there are dozens of people out there, some yeah. well known, some not well known. And if you, that same audience that I can still see, John, that you are yeah. not so per sure I that I, I think I can see you now. Right. He said to Harvey the Rabbit. Yeah. Sitting next to <laughs> what was it, Jimmy Stewart? Was that yeah, Jimmy Stewart? That's right. Yeah. Okay. So, so even though he still thinks of you as Harvey the Rabbit, I know you're real. And um, uh, if you have some suggestions of people we can speak to, either the ordinary doing just interesting things in their second act, or the extraordinary, let us know. Maybe you're one of them. And uh, we'd like That's to tell true. your story. Yeah. So I, uh, one last thought, and that is uh, we've just talked about future videos that we're right. going to be posting uh, after the first of the year, throughout the new year. And I think they're a good example of what Celebrating Act Two is. Um, so you've got J.A. Jantz, famous author, mm -hmm. um, talking about her book, her characters, or her, her career. Uh, you've got Dave Samuels, a professional... Um, financial planner. Financial planner. Uh, with really, really good, solid advice applicable for everybody uh, at every age about finances. And uh, we've got Manny Pacheco, who interviewed a dozen authors and took us on a tour of the, uh, the Hollywood Heritage Museum. You know, so you've got entertainment and finance and uh, famous authors. That's a kind of a look at what we do, which is about life, all of life, entertainment and finance and health and everything else. So tune in to celebratingact2.com and Celebrating Act 2 on YouTube and let us know what you like and what you want more of. And we'll see you soon. See you. For more on Celebrating Act 2, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends, Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.